Okay, cool. So we're going to talk in the last part of chapter three, right, about graphing polynomials. So we talked about graphing quadratics already, so now we're going to do polynomials. These are different types of polynomials that hopefully by the end of this section, you guys will be able to graph all these different types of things just by looking at the equation, or at least have an idea of what it looks like, okay? So if you look at the equations here, this is uh, x squared graph, right? If we look at like the degree of each of these is x to the third, x to the fourth, okay? And then we have an x to the third, x to the fourth, that's a negative x to the fourth and a negative x to the third graph, all right? So we're going to look at the behavior of each of these graphs. You guys could graph, if, if we were to graph these on decimals or whatever, that's what they look like. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and write down uh, some similarities between the first, third, and fifth graphs. So let's look at, okay, here's the first graph, the third graph, and the fifth fifth graph. Okay. And I'll kind of give you a, a hint on this. Remember when we were on this last test we were talking about like the limit as x goes to infinity, which way did the arrows go and the limit as x goes to negative infinity? What do you notice about the arrows on all of those graphs, the end behavior? They all go in one way. They all go in the same direction, that's right. So that's one thing is that the arrows point in the same direction, okay? Yeah, these all look symmetrical. That's perfect. This one is symmetrical along the line y equals one, but yeah, they all have like symmetry and they kind of have what we call even symmetry, right? They're like even function because they're kind of symmetrical around here. And if you look at the equations, okay, we talked about this one has um, degree two, this one has degree four, and this one also has degree four. So all those degrees, what do you notice about those degrees? They're all, yeah, multiples of two. So they're all even degrees, okay, even degree, all right? So then let's look at the second, the fourth, and the sixth graphs. So we have this one, it's x to the third. Okay, we got this graph right here. This is also x to the third. This is also x to the third. Okay, what do you notice about the arrows on the x to the third? So that's graph 2.6. Yeah, the arrows are going opposite direction. Oh, that's the worst to go. Thank you. Yeah, so the arrows are going to point opposite from each other. Um, and yeah, these are all degree uh, three. Okay. And they also have like some kind of symmetry. Like if I'm looking at this, that definitely looks like it has odd symmetry, at least like kind of odd symmetry. Odd symmetry is where it's symmetrical, but like going the opposite directions, you know? Okay. Um, but these all, these all have odd degrees. Okay, so then talk about what's the, the connection between the graphs and their equations. Well, we already kind of talked about it with even and odd. But let's look at something really quickly. Uh, instead of answering that question, let's answer this question. Um, for graphs one, three, and five, how can you tell, oops, if the arrows go that way or that way, okay? So we know that they go in the same direction. We're looking at the connection between the graph and the equation. Basically, what I want you to look at is how can you tell if both sides go up or both sides go down by just looking at the equations, if you have any guesses. So right here, the graph number one, the arrows go up, up. 
Same thing with number three. But what's changing on number five to make them go down, down? Negative, negative where? Uh, well, the leading coefficient. The, yeah, nice. Negative leading coefficient. So this is kind of why we're talking about degree and leading coefficient and stuff like that. Because if it has a negative leading coefficient, it will go down, down. If it has positive, it will go up, up. Okay? And all the graphs are going to behave that way, which makes sense because if I make it times a negative, it flips it upside down, you know? And then let's say the same thing. How can we tell on graphs 2, 4, and 6, how can we tell if the arrows go, uh, let's see, let me do this one first, down to up? Okay. Or up to down. So how can we tell which way that they go? So same type of idea is like graph number two, this is positive, it goes down to up. Graph number four, this is positive, it goes down up. But then graph number six is negative, it goes up down. Okay. So again, um, a positive leading coefficient would look like that. A negative leading coefficient would look like that. All right. Well, I'm like abbreviating a lot of stuff, but we'll make a chart in just a second to, to know how it looks. So what we could do is kind of like determine what polynomials are going to look like just by looking at their equation. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Basically, the connection is if it has a positive, I'm going to write this a little better, positive leading coefficient and it's an odd degree because that's what those graphs all were or odd degrees is going to go the arrows are going to go from down to up if it has a negative leading coefficient it's going to flip the arrows are going to go from up up on the left, down on the right. Because again, it's like flipping upside down. Okay? So you're going to have to remember that, but I have a pretty good way of like helping you to remember that stuff, I think. So let's look at this next thing. All right? Okay, so when I start with even, this is how you guys are going to remember it. So this is called, actually, let's start. This is called end behavior. End behavior basically means what do the arrows look like, okay? So a lot of times they'll call this, like if you're uh, seeing in a book or something, they'll call it the leading coefficient test to determine end behavior, okay? It's called the leading coefficient test. So here's how we do it. Um, if you think about, just think about an example in your head. The easiest even that I can think of, the easiest graph with an even exponent is like x squared, right? Do we all know what x squared looks like? Super easy, because we know it goes like this. So that means that if it has a positive leading coefficient and it's even, it's gonna be up, up. Now you can either draw your arrows and just draw them both up, or you can write up, up. I don't care which one you do, all right? But evens go the same direction. Positive will go up, up. And then just think about like, well, what happens when I put a negative in front of my x squared? It flips upside down, right? So negative is going to go down, down, or you can just write the words down, down. I don't, I don't care if you write it or if you draw it. All right. So then the difference is, even's a little easier to remember for me. Odd's a little harder to remember, but the one that I usually will think of for odd is x to the third. Third. If you guys remember that x to the third goes like this, it starts low and goes high like that, okay? Then every other graph is going to behave like that, meaning x to the fifth, x to the seventh, x to the ninth. All right, if it's a positive odd, it will go from down to up. That's if it's a positive odd. If I make this x to the third negative, it will flip it. So a negative odd degree will go up to down, okay? So you guys, even odd talks about the degree. 
Positive negative talks about the leading coefficient. So that's why it's so important. Like that's kind of the reason why we were like on the warm up or whatever, why we were looking at what's the degree, what's the leading coefficient, because it actually tells us what the graph is going to look like. It gives us some information. Okay. All right. How are we doing so far? We good? Okay, cool. Okay, the next thing that we're always going to look at after end behavior is we're going to look at x-intercepts. All right? X-intercepts. So let's go back and look at the front page, and let's go ahead and list the x-intercepts for graph uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. All right? You guys can look and do x list the x-intercepts. Remember that the x-intercepts are where it crosses the x axis. Okay, see if you guys can lift those down. Okay, so guys, let's look at the um, x-intercepts on graph number three, okay? So I can see it crosses at negative two, negative one, one, and two, all right? So let me go ahead and write those down at uh, negative two, negative one, one, and two, okay? For graph four, it has intercepts at negative two, negative one, and two. Now, we're gonna answer this first question before we move on, okay? And this says, what do you notice about the graphs of the x-intercepts for graphs three and four? So what I want you guys to notice is, this one had a degree of four, and it had four x-intercepts, okay? We talked about how the solution is supposed to equal the degree. This one had a degree of three, and it had three x-intercepts, and that's good, all right? So what we're going to say is, for graphs three and four, the x-intercepts, uh, oh, how, how about this, the number of x-intercepts equals the degree, all right? The other thing I want you to notice is at these x-intercepts, at these graphs, what it's doing is it's crossing the axis, okay? We call this a cross. It's just going straight across the axis, all right? Same thing on this graph. It's going cross, across, across, all right? So that's the other thing that we're going to talk about is it also crosses the x-axis, like it goes straight across. Okay, so how does that compare to what happens for graphs 5 and 6? Well, let's go ahead and list what the uh, x-intercepts are on graph 5 and 6. So on graph 5, it's negative 3, negative 1, 1. There are only three intercepts, but it's a fourth degree, okay? That's a little weird. We've got to talk about why that happens, but it's negative 3, negative 1, 1. So my x-intercepts here, sorry, I'm flipping back and forth like crazy negative three, negative one, one. But this one was degree four. So like, it looks like it doesn't match, right? It seems like we're missing one somewhere. And then same thing on graph six. Okay, look at the intercepts. The intercepts are negative two and one. Negative two and one, but it's a third degree. So we gotta talk about why that happens. Um, that's a degree three. So it looks like uh, the number of x-intercepts does not equal the degree. And the question is like, why does it do that? Well, we talked about how the other ones, they cross the x-axis, okay? They cross the x-axis. Let's look at the intercepts on graph uh, three, uh, no, which one, which one, yeah, okay, on graph five and graph six. This one's going across the axis, this one's going across the axis. What's this one doing? It's not going across, right? So, okay, so some people call that, it's, it touches it and it turns around, all right? Now, my word that I use for that is it bounces on the axis, okay? We're going to call that bouncing because it, like, comes down and it hits it and it goes back up again. 
almost like if you were to throw a ball on the floor and like hit it and go back up so it bounces. This one is doing that too, it bounces. Okay. And so that has to do with why we have a different number of solutions and the degree is a little bit different because it bounces on you. All right. Um, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you something real quick. You guys can just watch this uh, on Desmos. We're gonna take a look at something. I'm gonna put this in like factored form. Okay. Now, you guys remember, this is just a quadratic right here, but if it's factored to x plus 2 and x minus 3, right? If it's factored like that, that means my solutions are negative 2 and positive 3, okay? Okay, so uh, check this out. I'm going to put another x minus 3. What do you notice is now happening at that point? It's bouncing, okay? What that means is, you guys, that's called a double root or a uh, double solution. It means we count it twice. Because if you look right here, it's like if I look at my solutions now, it's negative 2. If I look at the equation, negative 2, 3, and 3, okay? So it counts double. So that's why this is a third degree, and I only see two roots. So if I go back to here, and I were listing out, like on number six, if I were listing out my x-intercepts, yeah, it would be negative two and one, but technically one would count twice. And that's why it would then equal the degree. It just counts double, okay? Uh, this one, the, the uh, solutions would be negative three, one, and negative one, but that one counts double. So I can actually like write it twice or something. All right. Okay, so that's called um, bouncing on the graph. So let's take a look here. Okay, so I want you guys to check this out. For graph five, here's the factored form. All right, I want you to look at something real quick. So the first thing we're going to look at is this. If x plus 1, that's called a factor. Okay, x plus 1 like that, that's called a factor. And then we know, you know, we like solve it and we go x equals negative one, right? That is called a solution, okay? So you guys need to like be aware of these words and stuff like that. That's a factor of the solution. This one, that's a factor. x minus one is a factor. x equals one is a solution. x plus three is a factor. x equals negative three is a solution. And if you look back at that graph, that's where it's going to hit, right? But we talked about how this one bounces. Looking at the equation, can you see why it's going to bounce? By just looking at the equation? Yeah, it has a squared, which means I'm going to count it twice. Okay? All right, you guys, this is something known as, it's also known as multiplicity. Okay, so we'll talk about multiplicity a little bit right here. All right. Here's how multiplicity works. Um, actually, let me show you some examples first, and then we'll go. Okay. So instead of just keep multiplying by x minus 3, I'm just going to put, like, squared. All right. So, um, so I'm going to leave this root the same, the negative 2. It's always going to cross. Let's just look at what happens right here. So if it has a multiplicity of 2, it's going to bounce. Okay. If it has a multiplicity of 3, it's going to cross, but it does like this weird like flat cross thing. Okay, you guys see that? So it doesn't just come up, like this is a normal, I call this a normal cross. That's got a multiplicity of 1. I call this a flat cross because it flattens and crosses. All right? So that's what happens when I do 3. When I do 4, it bounces again. See how it like flat, like it kind of gets a little bit wider right there. That like kind of flattens out. It never goes completely flat, but it just looks like it flattens out more. If I do five, it crosses, but it flattens out even more. You guys see that? And you should keep doing that over and over and over again. Okay. So what's six going to do? Bounce or cross? Bounce and even like even more uh, spread out right there or whatever. All right. 
So that's kind of how multiplicity works. So it's like, why don't you do that? Okay. If the, the degree, the power or the exponent on the factor is even, it will bounce. So squared to the fourth to the sixth, whatever. If the power on the exponent is odd, it will cross. But then every time it gets bigger and bigger, it goes like slightly flatter, okay? So I do want you to know the difference between like, um, here, we'll draw them right here. A multiplicity of one would like just cross normal like that, okay? A multiplicity of two bounce. And a multiplicity of three would cross, but it would like flatten. It would like flatten out a little bit. Okay, and then we won't really be graphing things bigger than that, like four or five, six, but at least you know what they do. All right. Uh, why intercepts are like one of the easier ones to find. That's something else that we're gonna look at is like why intercepts. Remember that y intercepts are when we plug in x equals zero, it's also on a graph where it crosses the y-axis. You will always only have one y-intercept. You'll never have more than one. Because if you do, it wouldn't be a function anymore, okay? So go ahead and list real quick your y-intercepts for each of those graphs. Okay, so for graph three, you guys see the y-intercept right here is four, okay? What do you notice about the equation that like can tell you where the y-intercept is? It's like that number right there, right? Yeah. Oh, ha, we can't see it because it got cut off, but we know it, right? So yeah, three would be at negative four and that, or four would be negative four. Yeah, we can't, oh, ha, there it is. Hello. Yeah, so. Hey, good looking. I thought it just got cut off. That was that was a good that was a good look on there. Decided to... decided to jump down there. That one's three, and then that one's like negative two. So if it's all multiplied out like that, right? Your y intercept is just going to be that number at the end. So four negative four, three negative two. Okay, so that was uh, easy enough. That was four negative four, three and negative two. Y intercepts is the easiest one to me. So every time we graph, we're going to do and behavior, that's the arrow thing, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, okay? And then we're gonna graph it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Can you see where the y-intercept equation is? Yeah, it's the uh, constant. You guys, a constant is a number without an x on it. So the number without an x, that's gonna be your y-intercept, okay? All right, so we're going to practice basically what I want you to do any time that we're graphing a polynomial, okay? Wait, what, what constant? Sorry, a uh, constant is the number without the x. So if I look at these equations, like if I look at number six right here, that one has an x, that one has an x, that doesn't. That's called the constant term. You know, we have like the leading term is the one in the front, the constant term is the one at the end, and that'll be your y-intercept if it's all like multiplied out like that. If you can't tell what the y-intercept is, just plug in zero, okay? Okay, so now that I kind of explained everything, let's do some examples, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna have you guys list out a few things every time you do these. So there's not a lot of room on here, so just find maybe space at the top or something. So for number one, the first one we're gonna do is the leading coefficient test to determine end behavior. I'm just going to call it arrows, okay? And what I want you guys to think about, if I multiplied this out, I would have x to the what? If I were to multiply it all out, I don't want you to multiply it out, but what would you have for the first term, x to the? How many x's do I have on there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then see how it's like there's a negative right here? So it's negative odd. So I know what my arrows look like for negative odd. They go, 
yeah, like that, up to down. Okay. Okay, the second thing that we're always going to find is the x-intercepts or the solutions. And you guys can look at each of these and remember that it's just as if you were solving them. So since this says, since this says x minus 2, it has an x-intercept at positive 2. Plus 1 has an intercept at negative 1. And minus 1 has an intercept at 1. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put those on my graph right now. So 2, negative 1, and 1. Ooh, those are very close to each other. All right. And the fact, you guys, that they all have a multiplicity of one means they're all going to cross, right? Nothing's going to bounce. Nothing weird is happening. They're all going to cross. The last thing I want to find is the y-intercept. Now, I'm not going to multiply this out. Let's just go ahead and plug in zero and see what I get. If I put zero here, zero here, and zero here, okay? So I have negative. All right, zero minus two is negative two. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So 3 negatives make a negative. 2 times 1 times 1 is 2. Yeah, so that's one of my three. So I have a negative times a negative, which is positive, times another negative. Then it goes back to negative again. So those three are negatives, and then negative 2 times 1 times negative 1. So I can go ahead and draw my y-intercept. I know my arrows go up to down. So just kind of draw it up, up to down like that. Just kind of draw your arrows. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to sketch it and we have to cross through each point. So this is like the kind of fun part, okay? Because you just go like this, cross, 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 and just try to like meet up with that down there. Cross, cross, cross. All right. Now in terms of like how high does that point go? We don't know, okay? I might have drawn it up to like one. Some, one of you guys might have drawn it up to three. That's fine because we don't really know how high it goes, all right? We're just kind of – that's why this is called sketching is we're just kind of like looking at where we think it's going to go to, okay? So those are what you're going to do for every single graph is you're going to do arrows, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. All right, so let's look at this one. Uh, okay, let's start with arrows. Now, if I were to multiply all these out, now don't forget that this is like squared right here. So if I had an x squared and an x and an x, how many x's total is that? Four. And it's negative. So what do we know about a negative with an even? Down, down. You can either just draw them or you can write it or whatever. Okay. Okay, now my x intercepts are negative 1, 1, and 3. But something special happens at the negative 1 because it's squared, right? What's going to happen right there? Yeah. That's right. So you can either write bounce to remind you, you can write bounce, or sometimes you guys will see me write this. Sometimes I'll write m, hold on, this pen is too big. Uh, just a second. Let me change the size of that. Okay. Sometimes you'll see me write M O two. That's my abbreviation for it. it has a multiplicity of two. Okay. Meaning it counts twice. It counts as two. Down, I just the one again and put that you can do that. So you can just list it twice. Yep. You can definitely do that. So I know that that's going to bounce cross cross. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put it at negative one, one and three. All right, I might put like a little B right there to remind me when I graph it that that's going to bounce. Cross, cross. Okay. My arrows go like this. My arrows go down, down. So then the only other thing that might help me is just a Y-intercept. And it's like not even that big of a deal. It just gives me one more point on the graph, you know. Okay, so if I plug in zero here, here, and here, I get, okay, a negative on the outside. 1 squared is 1, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 3. So I, again, I have 3 negatives, and it's 1 times 1 times 3, so that's uh, negative 3, yeah, good, negative 3. Okay, 
Okay, so you guys, now I'm going to draw it, and I'm going to bounce cross cross, all right? Because if you mess something up, you'll see, like, it won't hit the y-intercept. Like, if I forget to bounce right here and I cross, it's like, well, how does it come down and hit the y-intercept, you know? So it won't really work. So when I draw this, i got to go, okay, I'm going to bounce there, hit that point, cross there, cross there. All right, and so then all I'm like kind of looking for is which way the arrows are going, which way your x-intercepts are going, stuff like that. All right. <coughs> okay, so let me give you a second just to try these two. These are all nicely factored out. Uh, so for number three, you can like write it on the bottom. Just make sure you do arrows, um, x-intercepts, and y-intercept. And then same thing for number four, arrows, x-intercept, y-intercept. And remember, for the arrows, you just have to figure out how many x's there are total, okay? I'll take a second, see if you guys can sketch those real quick. Okay, you guys, this one was an x, x, x squared. So that's an x to the fourth positive. So my arrows would go up, up. My x-intercepts were negative 1, negative 2, and 2 twice. However you want to say that, multiplicity of 2 or times 2 or whatever. Like, however you, or list it twice or whatever. Okay? So that reminds me that I'm going to bounce right there. The y-intercept was 8. Did you guys get 8 for the y-intercept? Okay, great. Boom. And what are my arrows? Up, up. Okay. Up, up. And now I just connect everything, right? So it's going to cross, cross, go and hit that, bounce. Okay? It looks like cross, cross, bounce. And I can, you know, I could graph this on decimals or whatever, grab a calculator and check and see that that's exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, for what? Oh, for the y-intercept? Uh, did you square this one? Yeah, so... Uh, negative 2 squared will be 4 times 2 times 1. So, where did you get the negative 1? Um, for the solution, you mean? For the x-intercept? Yeah. Uh, from this one. You right? Well, yeah, but remember when you solve it, you have to do the opposite. Because what I'm really doing is I'm doing like x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract that over, x is negative 1. So that one's negative 1. That one is negative 2. That one is positive 2. So it's always the opposite when you solve, right? So like x plus 1 is the factor. x equals negative 1 is the solution. Okay? So, okay, so on this one, if I do arrows, all right, x, 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 that's going to be x to the third, and it's positive. So my arrows will go down up. So the x-intercepts are the opposites of these. So negative 1, positive 2, positive 3. They're all just one time. So they all cross. And then the y-intercept, if I plug that in, okay, if I plug in 0, I get 1 times negative 2 times negative 3, which is a uh, positive 6. My arrows go from down to up, okay? So I'm just going to cross through everything. So I'm just going to cross, cross, cross. All right? As long as you know the arrows and the bouncing, crossing, and where it bounces and crosses, where the x-intercepts are, you guys can graph basically anything that's factored out for you. All right? Um, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the homework that you're going to do. Ooh, go. Okay, let's see. Um, let me download it real quick. Come on, that, uh, that. There we go. All right. Okay. So oh, this is going a little slow. All right, end behavior means arrows, okay? X-intercepts, Y-intercept. You guys can go ahead and cross off uh, 
cemetery and turning points. We haven't talked about that yet. We probably will. You could cross off cemetery and turning points. Okay. Now, guys, this one is not factored out for you. Do you think, though, that we can factor this out? What, what would you do first to try to factor this? You can do a GCF, right? Okay, so I can do 7x and then x squared minus 4. And then can you continue to factor x squared minus 4? Yeah, difference of squares, right? You guys remember that's a difference of squares? So this is actually what it factors to, 7x, x plus 2, x minus 2, okay? So you can also use that that's all nice and factored out to list all your stuff and then try to graph it. Yeah, so if I were setting that equal to 0 and dividing by 7, it would give me 0. So one of my x-intercepts is going to be zero. The other one will be negative two. The other one will be positive two. Okay, that one's already factored out for you. Again, you can just cross off symmetry and max turning points. Because I haven't talked about that. Uh, end behavior means arrows. So like this one is odd degree and positive, and we know odd positive goes down up. But isn't there? Well, yeah, you only have to add it together if it's factored out. So if it's factored out, see, I have one, two, three x's. If it's not factored out, you just look at the first term, okay? Yeah, so that just means the arrows. X-intercepts, Y-intercepts. This one's going to have some bouncing, all right? Then you have a couple more practice things, just like the ones that we did in class. Some of these have more multiple um, parts to them. And then for seven and eight, I want you guys to see if you can go backwards. See if you can figure out what the equations are if you know the arrow goes like down to up and you know what the intercepts are and stuff like that. See if you can figure it out by, oh, it crosses there, it bounces there. So just try to write equations for these. All right, and that's it. So you guys have the rest of the period to do that. And then also your uh, exit ticket. You can do them in either order. I don't care. I'll post that right now though.